man i can't tell you how much of a series that this is going to be i'm standing on a million lives is actually going to be one of those anime series you think is going to be soft but it's probably going to be a hard anime not the hardest but it's still a good watch compared to the softness I actually had in mind it was gonna be. So we gotta start off at this point of the anime series where Yotsuya is just a child, doesn't have friends, okay? He grew up exiling everyone around him. This mainly stemmed from his childhood, being that he had friends for some reason that um, didn't meet him back at the same spot, which was the big tree that him and his friend decided to meet at. And for some reason, I don't know what it is exactly because they didn't go into detail, but it kind of forced him to go down the lonely route of pushing everyone away from him and being the only person he kind of relies on which also kind of leads to also him being mentally unhealthy not developing no form of friendships not developing no form of relationships and in that kind of world to anybody who decides to do that you kind of start to go down a dark deep path of loneliness if you're not careful now let's talk about Hakuzai for a minute because Hakuzai is one of those characters that we look at as weak let's be honest the girl from the first episode couldn't do nothing, she couldn't swing her sword and she couldn't actually get active within the fighting scenarios of when Yosuyuka needed her to help with killing goblins. It kind of was a shocker to see how much of a character development she was starting to go through, especially because being that kind of character, I kind of get used to seeing those kind of characters as helpless throughout the whole series, not knowing that she had an illness in the real world, which kind of stopped her from being maneuverable to the extent of being exercise capable and this is what kind of held back her mentality in wanting to help Yotsuya in the first episode but as Yotsuya had left she finally came to realization that she kind of let this illness hold her back in this world of the game that they are in illnesses sickness they don't exist so she's basically as fit as any fiddlestick within this game and so she decides to actually do her best and start swinging the swords repetitively in order to build in her muscles so that she can swing at enemies needed but she's still at the baby stage of finding herself within her warrior rank and though she did save the child that was with her that was talking to her while she was training and she was pouring out her emotions out too she did well to defend herself and i gotta say hakuzai is one of those characters where down the episodes of this series i definitely have faith in her that she's going to be a character that Yotsuya and Shindo can definitely rely on. It's just that right now she's in the infant stage of developing her confidence and her abilities. It was really nice to see Yotsuya save Hakuzai and Shindo within this episode just due to him being desperate enough to get to that level 10 rank and call the half-headed man who then granted him another spin at the will which allowed him to be a chef. Being a chef also allowed him to also gain the skill of seeing the insides of his enemy which was the troll at this particular time and use his new weapon which was a chef sword to cut with inside the stomach and leave the troll bleeding out quite badly because of this it slowed down the troll's ability to carry on jumping off the Yotsuya and being so aggressive towards him in order to kill him because we all know that if Yotsuya dies then that's the end of this series that's the end of the show but Yotsuya pulled through and was able to cut open the stomach which also allowed Shindo and Hakozai to then come out and also repetitively do their best to carry on finding the patterns of the movement of the troll because of the amount of deaths that they were taking one by one it allowed their success rate to increase and finally destroy the troll and complete the quest if Yotsuya didn't come across that log where Hakazai was pouring out her emotions just before the village was destroyed whilst he was at the mountains doing his best to rank up his rank then I don't think the realization of how much of a stingy guy Yotsuya has been personally would have affected him to want to actually gain the upper hand on the troll because if he didn't come to the realization of how much he had been stingy how much he had been thinking all about himself and how much he had been pushing people away he would have not come to the point of actually possibly saving Hakuzai and Shindo which allowed him to beat the troll as a team the girl in the real world is weak not necessarily saying that she's weak mentally but she is definitely weak physically in terms of the illness that she has for herself which is kind of a downfall but in this world she can be the best that she can be if she just puts her mind to it and obviously being as a person who is fine in the real world he doesn't want to let someone like her have the best over him just due to the fact that he is a man and after high school she wants to get into the pharmaceutical business which is obviously relative towards her health and wanting to help herself and others who probably have the same illness we didn't get much from Shindo in this episode except she knows as well as Hakozaki 
know what they are doing after high school they know that they're going to the same school which is Morokoshi High School of Science and Technology which Shindo would be attending as well as Hakozaki but Hakozaki like I said earlier on wants to be a carer for pharmaceutical research obviously the reason why is because of her illness but it just goes to show that she has everything planned but Yotsuya so he still doesn't know what he has planned for the future even though he's in his third year of high school but I believe down the line he's gonna know what he wants to do we do know that as a completion towards the end of the 10th step of the quest that some form of problematic matters is going to happen towards the city that they are from but i'd seen that it was three of them who kind of summoned the beast so i'm not sure if they are the main culprits for the problems that's going to happen to their world as a set goal though they all have an idea of what will be expected towards the ending of the 10th step quest and so they should be working towards that it's nice to know that even though time doesn't move the same in the real world and in the game which a day and some hours have passed between the two realms nothing has changed within the real world that they are from it's still the same time when they come back from the game and so they continue their lives as if nothing even happened i gotta say i may not have mentioned this in episode one but the quality is really nice like i was even thrown back when i first started watching episode two i may have forgotten how the quality was but i really did enjoy this episode Episode 2 was a good run on the continuation of attempting to kill the troll which they did successfully and we got some more information on what the end result is going to be like as well as how they can develop as individual classes for their rank. So yo, if you guys enjoyed this video make sure to leave a like, subscribe especially if you're new and whether you're watching or listening to this in the morning, afternoon, evening, it's been your boy Roos or Mr. 36 and I'm out. Peace.